Well, hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Melanie. I just wanted to send out a special thanks to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for taking that leap of faith with me. I really do appreciate you. It makes me motivated to want to keep doing this YouTube thing. Today I'm excited to be joining alongside over 20 plus talented YouTubers in this fall slash Halloween challenge hosted by Lemons to Lemonade. We all had to go out and pick a piece of furniture and put our own unique twist on it. After you finish watching this video, you're not going to want to miss anybody else's video, so please check out the playlist in the description. And I hope you have your snacks ready, sit back and relax. It'll be like Saturday morning cartoons all over again. All these projects here that I need to get done and moved out of my little workspace before it gets cold. I really didn't want to purchase another piece of furniture. I decided it would be fun to put all of these random bits and create our own funky piece of Franken furniture. I have all these pieces that I have been saving. <laughs> these really cool legs. These ones that I took off of an old sofa on the side of the road. It was just too rotted to do anything with, so I saved the legs. I got a bunch of different kinds of legs. These cool spindles came off of an old stairwell in a really old house. My friend gave me these. This is an actual drawer pull from an old MCM dresser. I have other legs. I have jars of old casters, which would be kind of cool. I also thought of this one single large Edison ball that I have. This could be interesting. These different random bits that, you know, have just been in here that I've collected that I thought were cool, that were too interesting to get rid of. So let's put them to use and let's see if we can make our own piece of Franken furniture. Stay tuned if you want to see if this project actually comes to life. This really funky drawer was just too cool looking for me to get rid of. It originally came from an old barn fine vanity that I already upcycled. I had separated them into two separate nightstands, but this drawer I thought was just too cool to get rid of. Um, it had a really cool curve on it. I also ended up saving the bottom part of this drawer, which had a slider on it for the drawer to sit on and slide in and out. This time I'm going to be placing it on top and using it as a lid. I also went with those two really chunky legs that I had. They were pretty cool, but I only had two of them. So I also chose one of those cool unicorn looking spindles. And this is going to be a three legged kind of contraption. Jumping right into the prep work. This old drawer, I had forgotten exactly how filthy it was, but you saw from the pictures, it legit was found inside of a barn. It was muddy and filthy and gross. So I scrubbed it down and I power washed it. I don't recommend doing that to furniture, but on this piece, it was totally necessary. So what I did is I brought out my forced air dog hair dryer. Um, this thing um, shoots out air at a high velocity and it has a heat setting. So I was able to dry this drawer pretty quick and easy. I was planning on removing the veneer anyhow, so dampening it was not going to hurt one bit. For that other spindle that was covered in paint, I used my Jasco stripper and just wrapped it in some plastic wrap and set it aside for a while while I did the rest of the prep work. To remove the veneer, I used a skinny flat metal scraper, just wedged it in between the layers and lifted it up. This veneer came off super easy, which doesn't always happen. Because of all that glue the veneer was adhered to this drawer top with, I started off with a 60 grit sandpaper and then worked my way down to 220. So I still have more to sand, but look what was underneath that veneer. I think this is poplar because it's kind of green. And they just used a bunch of pieces all glued together. But isn't that kind of cool? Doesn't that kind of give you Frankenstein vibes? 
For the legs, I sanded down what parts I could with my orbital sander, and the rest got hand sanded. That one spiral spindle, I finished taking off all the stripper with a brush and cleaned it off with mineral spirits, hand sanded that as well. I also used these leftover 3 quarter inch plywood pieces I had left over from a project I did where I redid my pantry and I built new shelves from scratch. If you're curious what it looks like, you can see the before and after pictures on my Instagram. After placing down those pieces of scrap wood, I tried to utilize as much of the wood as possible by drawing a very abstract kind of squiggly design and just trimmed everything out using my jigsaw. And here's what Frankie is starting to look like. To secure those pieces of plywood onto the sides of the drawer, I needed to create some supports. So I grabbed a few pieces of scrap wood from my pile, cut them to the lengths of the sides of the drawer, placed the drawer upside down, and traced a line where it would be sitting. This enabled me to know exactly where I could drill some pilot holes so I knew where to drill from the other side of the board. Before securing it in place, I used a little bit of wood glue and clamped it together real tight. I just want a piece of me Creating my own piece of Franken furniture really made me think how furniture is built and why things are put in certain places. After putting on those supports, I thought they would probably tilt if they had too much weight. So I decided to cut out some little blocks and put those underneath so that they wouldn't tilt with all that extra weight on there as well. So I just cut off again from my scrap wood, glued them into place, clamped everything and let it dry nice and hard overnight. The next morning I attached that plywood by first putting just a little bit of wood glue and then screwing it in from underneath. To create the tightest bond possible amongst the plywood pieces that were going to be joined together, I used my Craig jig by just first screwing in a few holes, placing a little bit of wood glue in between that seam and clamping it very tight so I can get these pieces joined together as flush as possible. For the piece of wood that was going to be joining onto the top of that drawer, I needed hinges. I didn't like the way it looked sitting on top, so I placed it in between the boards and I didn't like that it left a gap or that it stuck out, which meant I would need to carve out a little area of wood to kind of inset that hinge in between. I first traced out where the hinge was going to be placed and with a handsaw, I cut the depth of the width of that hinge and with a chisel and a hammer I just kind of lightly tapped out until that area of wood was gone. Did you know you could make your own wood filler by mixing up just a little bit of sanding dust with some wood glue? That's exactly what I did here. I didn't have any light wood filler on hand so I just made my own. I used it to fill in the edges of the wood that got kind of tore up by the jigsaw. I placed it in between the seams of the boards that I joined together and anywhere else that I needed to fill in just a little hole. I kind of went a little too crazy with the homemade wood filler, forgetting how strong it actually was. So I had to use some heavy duty sandpaper and work my way down to 220, which kind of caused me to eat through the wood a lot more in certain areas like this one. We'll have to figure out how to make that work. To disguise that plywood to look like one solid piece of wood, I use a little bit of this edge banding. It's just simply applied by heating it on with an iron and then just putting some pressure onto it until it cools off. And then to trim it off, I use this little <laughs> edge banding trimmer tool. It's only a couple bucks, but it's so worth it. It saves you so much time. 
And then to just finish it off, everything got hand sanded with 220 grit sandpaper to help it look nice and flush together. Here's all the pieces after they were nice and prepped. I kind of like that they're all different kinds of woods. Very, very Frankenstein, but I still needed to make them look a little more cohesive. I went with General Finishes Gel Stain in the color Nutmeg. Everything seemed to be going very well with this project until, well, this happened. Did you catch that? Let me rewind. I had been working on this project most of the day and if you can tell, I did not have the leg supporting it. So when I went to place it on top of this little table, it was off balance. Oh my gosh, I was so mad. I was so frustrated. I can't believe I recorded myself. Trust me, you don't wanna hear me. I was rambling on and I was not making sense. So the best decision I think I could have ever made was just to stop. Well, good morning, everybody. It's the next day. I'm feeling super rested. I just needed to step away last night after what happened. Sometimes when stuff like that happens, you gotta know when to step away because it's not good for you. It's not gonna be good for your project if you keep going with that, you know, negativity. So I'm fully rested. I got a nice big cup of Earl Grey tea in hand and I've decided that Frankie is going to cooperate whether he likes it or not. So I'm gonna put the legs back on so he doesn't tip over <laughs> again and we're gonna assess the damage. So here's what Frankie looked like in the morning. This one little area is damage I did previous by sanding too deep through that plywood. This corner is where Frankie hit the ground and it split the plywood along with that edge banding. The top of the rest of the table will also need to be resanded because as it hit this textured concrete, it kind of imprinted. I will also need to be fixing this hinge. One of them came completely detached, but the other one was still intact. Overall, it wasn't too bad. To fix the hinge, I mixed up a little bit of that sawdust and wood glue, put it into those original screw holes, and then um, replace the screws one more time, set it into place the way it needed to be standing, and once it was completely dry, it was rock solid. Where Frankie hit the ground, I had to sand through all those layers of plywood before I got to a nice flat surface. I touched it up with a little bit of wood filler along with the rest of the imperfections on the top of the table and sanded everything down nice and smooth with 220 grit sandpaper. As you might have noticed, I did stain the top of Frankie. <laughs> I did not film it because I was irritated and it did me no good anyways. There was no point in continuing to work while I was upset because here I am having to re-sand everything down again. So here's a lesson for y'all. If you get frustrated or irritated, a project seems too difficult, you might be tired that's when you know you need to throw in the towel and say, you know what, I'm gonna call it quits for today and reassess at a later date. I'm so glad that I stopped when I did because I probably would have ended up doing further damage to this project had I continued on. Frankenstein had metal bits on him, so Frankie needs a few metal embellishments. I use a few of these railroad date nails, made a stopping point on my drill bit so I knew how far to drill without going all the way through. Made me a few little pilot holes. And then once those holes were done, I came back with a larger drill bit and countersunk those holes so that the date nails would sit a little flush. The reason why I didn't use a countersunk bit is because this was only three quarters of an inch thick and a countersunk bit would have went a lot deeper than what I needed. So with just a larger drill bit, I drilled very, very slow so I didn't go too deep and just enough so that that date head was nice and smooth and it was perfect. One more time, I stained down the entire piece with General Finishes Nutmeg Gel Stain. And looking at it, because this table didn't have an apron, I also decided to stain the underside part of the drawer and because I didn't want to stain everything underneath I also decided to paint the rest of it with DIY paint in the little black dress this is this brand's deepest black 
um, DIY paint is chalk based and it is very very highly pigmented so I knew this would be the perfect paint on this raw wood because it kind of acts like a stain when you wet it down and um, just judging from experience I know that this paint would only need one coat to cover completely which is what I wanted here's what it looked like after just applying one coat of little black dress it was completely covered and within about 15 minutes in the sun, it was completely dry and ready to be sealed. I sealed up Frankie's undercarriage with this um, Minwax polyurethane in a water-based satin finish. I chose to spray it on because looking at this piece, it would have been kind of a bear to paint all of that by hand. So spraying it on really saved me a lot of time. And I was also able to go ahead and seal the legs while it was in this position. I gave everything two coats of the sealer and this is what it looked like. This piece is after all inspired by Frankenstein and he wasn't perfect. I decided to use some of that same DIY little black dress paint to really define all the flaws that were on top of the table. Along the seams, um, all the areas where I sanded down too deeply and then the parts where I'm going to put the metal bits. I just ever so slightly dipped my paintbrush into that paint put it on and then mist it with water and diffused out. It blended really, really nice. It looks very natural. It kind of gives it a charred look without actually charring the table. I've done this technique quite a bit. It's one of my favorites. I would highly encourage you to try if you do like this kind of look. It's really simple and easy um, and it's easy just to practice on an old drawer, a scrap piece of wood or something small. My other two pugs were really curious that day and kind of watched me throughout this process. Before I sealed this project, I attached those little metal date nail heads with just a little bit of epoxy. The top of the staple got sealed with Minwax polyacrylic water-based sealer in this time a brush on formula. I always think this is kind of interesting. Do you notice how cloudy that paint is? Once I put on the sealer, look how it just comes back to life. It's because it has a really high clay content. It kind of dries a little cloudy and that freaks people out sometimes, but I get a kick out of it. I use a total of three coats on the top of this table. Just when you think I'm done, here comes another idea. I recently went junking with my mom and in the process picked up two of these vintage lamp heads. I thought that these little lamp heads were so cool, so I wanted to attach them onto Frankie. I purchased one of these threaded ends from the plumbing section of the store and just attached it with some JB Weld. I'm also going to be using the rest of these plumbing bits to connect it the rest of the way. And then to screw everything on, I didn't have matching screws. I had a couple flats and a couple um, rounded bits, but I thought, hey, the mismatch metals and screws are only gonna add to Frankie's look, so here we go. What started from a piece of an old barnwood fine and some mismatched scraps. Let's see if Frankie has finally come to life. Chiff, chiff, nah, chiff, chiff, 
drift or oh, flick the switch, kill the lights. Oh, I wasted. City lights are shining so bright. All these empty faces. We don't care about them tonight. We're going out of ourselves. Can you feel it? Almost like I don't know if it's real. Cause when we're doing our thing with the wheels, don't stop turning. I know we're acting stupid. all think of Frankie? Was he frank and fabulous or was he a frank and fail? And have you ever tried to create your own piece of frank and furniture? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, till next time, happy junkie.